Welcome to another episode of Charros y Clásicos, a Basque Streams podcast. I'm your host, Miguel Gutierrez, and as always, I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Joel Zun. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Charros y Clásicos. Our guest for today is a Charro and Clásico from Edinburgh, Texas. He's a graduate from Edinburgh North High School. He's also a graduate from UTRGV. He's currently a mariachi director at Edinburgh North High School. Please welcome Abel Acuña. Abel. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Miguel, Joel, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for, for joining us and being able to do this. You look good. Thank you. You look good. You've lost some weight? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, you grow up, doctor tells you to watch it. That's what we have to do. So you have to watch it. You have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it is. Yeah, well, so we invited you over because, well, we wanted to congratulate you, first of all, for your school's biggest accomplishment. Can you tell us about that? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, well, last uh, last year, last school year, uh, we had a, a film crew that was uh, following my, my students around, uh, making a documentary on, on I guess, um, they're very interested on, on the students uh, here in the borderlands, like how the mariachi has grown like so much and, and how UIL is like really accepting it and stuff like that. And they're very interested in, in us in particular, because most of my students um, don't, don't, you know, they don't speak Spanish. Oh, okay. They don't speak Spanish and, and, but, but they love the music and they want to be, they want to get in touch with the, with the culture, you know, with, with mm. where they're from and, and how, and it was so so and this music that you know their abuelitos and and their their parents you know that they listen to and you know they want to get in touch with that and they fall in love with the music and so they're very interested in that and and uh decided they wanted to make like a a 90 minute documentary on it 90 minute okay yeah. no, that's not bad so my question is how did you get selected or did they just pick up the phone and call you and say hey, we want to do this or how did this happen well yeah i guess that's exactly what happened. At, well, not the phone, but email. Um, yeah. It's because the thing is, when when UIL first picked it up, um, what happened is that these filmmakers, I think they were at another UIL event, and they kind of heard that mariachi was getting picked up, and so they were they were interested in in um, in finding you know you know a group that they could like kind of like follow around, and it was just for a small little twelve minute. Uh, uh, little document, just a small one, just to kind of like educate the, the, the rest of the public. So they saw, uh, where is the state UIL event being hosted? They saw that it was Edinburgh, Texas. So they saw the high schools there and plus, um, they saw Edinburgh North and that's how we were, we were set. So you, you stood out for that. Yeah. We, I mean, in a way, yeah, we, we stood out. Uh, I think they were just looking at the, at the groups that had, that, that, I think it was, I, they were just thinking Edinburgh. I mean, they're from they're, they don't they're not from here, so they they think you know the 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 surrounding cities are like far away. So they're like, right. okay, let's let's stick to something here in, in Edinburgh. And uh, so yeah, they they they, uh, they reached out uh, by email, and by the time I knew it, I was talking to these people, and, and you know they came by and and they did a short one, um, a twelve minute one for Pop Up Magazine, uh, and then the pandemic happened. And um, so that came out during the pandemic. And, but the thing is that everybody was at home doing nothing, you know, during right. the pandemic. So uh, it was really cool because, I mean, the pandemic was not cool. But the fact that everybody was at home, it was a lot more people got to see this, this right. short. Because everybody was just stuck to their screens at home. Right. right. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's what we all were. Like, I mean, I, I've never seen so many shows on netflix like you know but i mean that's that's the that's the reality that's where we were at right and uh so people saw this and they were very interested in how we recovered after um after the pandemic and so the filmmakers the same filmmakers they thought of an idea of of what is it like to to live in the life of a of a teenager that's going and doing all their schoolwork and living a teenager life and also being part of the mariachi uh, so they called me back and they asked if if I'd be interested, if I'd be willing to do something like that. I was like, yeah, sure. You know, like they're really good people. They treated us very well. Um, they're very they're very nice and and uh, courteous to us and stuff like that. And um, so I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. I mean, I wasn't really thinking much of it. I was just like, yeah, sure. You know, 
So they show up to the auditions in May, and and oh, we're going to come to your to your uh, to your summer camp, and and we're going to go to this. And I was like, oh man, it's becoming something pretty big. <laughs> it's not grande, and so that's how it it you know it took off. And finally, they like they sat down with me and they talked to me and told me what exactly was happening. We got the school district involved, and and um, and it took off, and it it started getting a life of its own, and and that's where. Uh, they they finished it all the way from auditions in May all the way to graduation the following May. Oh wow! So they were here for the entire school year. The entire school year, yeah. I mean, they got an apartment here and everything. Like it was, it's pretty amazing. Wow. Uh, the two filmmakers, and then like when there was like like big event, like a concert or a competition or whatever, they would bring in their their uh, their director. I think oh, I forgot what they're called. The the camera guy. Like, I think it's director of photography or something like that. Um, he would come in and then the sound person is that local person. I think he's from Westlaco. Uh, he would, he would do all the sound stuff and, you know, they just, the team of people would come for the big events. Uh, but the two filmmakers, they had an apartment here in McAllen. Wow. Yeah, so it was pretty, pretty so awesome. like a reality TV. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it was, it was weird. Cause like, I mean, they were following every, all the kids around and I was fine with that. And they're like, Hey, um, we're going to, we're going to follow you around also. And so I was like, oh, man, that's, well, first of all, like we were in the in the process of building a house, uh, my wife and I. Uh, so we were living with my in laws. So I had to go and like, oh, so you know, you know, <laughs> is it okay if these camera people come? He's like, sure, because they're gonna be so you know. Then he's walks really in. cool, man. Like he's he's really awesome. Like he walks you know. in his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But he was, you know, he's he's really cool. He's really open about it. And, you know, we explained it to them, and and they're really cool about you know the the people coming over and. And so they followed me around and, and they were like at the, in my office all the time and just kind of watching me work. And it's a little bit uncomfortable, but, uh, but, it, but they're really, they're really good about, you know, courteous and like making sure that they don't overstep, you know? So, mm. so just to get a, a better understanding out of the seven days of the week, would they follow you all seven days or? Not me. Like they had a schedule. They would go with one student on one day or another student and stuff like oh, that. Okay. And me, I think they saw that I was, I'm a very reserved person. Um, and so they kind of like left me alone until they needed stuff from me. And then they were like, sorry, you know, we're going to have to do this. And I was like, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I agreed to do this. So let's yeah. do it. You know, no pasa nada. The only thing is that I felt bad that I had to ask my suegros, is it okay? You know, mm. like, it, it was one of those things. Like I just, I, I felt a little bit bad because I wasn't in my house. Ya se fuera mi casa, no me vengas in, you know, like, yeah. but you know, I wasn't in, in my house because like I said, we we're building we're building our house at the time. So now that the documentary is complete, uh, it's being featured right at Sundance. Yes. Um, well, <clears throat> we we got the rough draft, the first draft of it, and uh, kind of just like so we could look at it and, and see that, you know, everything was correct, you know, because sometimes with the, with the editing and stuff, you know, sometimes they'll leave certain information out that, you know, on that's, that's important for mariachi or or the music or whatever so we got the rough draft and i was like oh man that's that's really awesome you know like and you know we gave our suggestions and then they told us that there's still gonna be some stuff that they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna uh fix up and uh you know that this is back in october early november and so my wife and I decided that we wanted to take a vacation during the Thanksgiving break. So we, we went out to New York and that's where the company is from. Most of the films are from uh, New York City. So we took advantage of the fact that we we're going to be there to go see the studio and see all the process of it that they do and stuff like that. And they're like, wait, what? You're going to be in town? Oh, you know, let's set up a, let's set up a dinner. And <laughs> so they got all the crew. Wow. Oh, you know, wow. And we, we went to a restaurant there in, in uh, Little Italy, uh, Little Italy. And, um, and I was like, man, that's, that they're treating us really nice. That's pretty cool. You know, like, yeah. and so, but it was because they were going to tell us that Sundance picked it up. And oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I, I don't know what that is. I'm a musician, you know, like I, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not really into TV and, and I shouldn't be saying that, right. Cause the documentary is on my kid, but, but I wasn't really into, I didn't really know what Sundance Film Festival was. Uh, but when I saw my wife react to that, I was like, whoa, okay, something's up. Something's good. You know, this something's is a big deal. <laughs> and she's like, babe, it's a big deal. I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Extremely, sir. Yeah. So, and so when I finally 
you know, I, we go back to the hotel that night. I started looking up documentary or like YouTube videos on, on it. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it is a big deal. It's a huge deal. And so it was very exciting. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, uh, I think they submitted it. I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what day they submitted, but they got the, the news a couple of days before we were there in New York. And, and you know, they decided to, to let us know. And they were very excited. It's, it's our, the filmmakers is the first film that they have. Uh, going to Sundance, wow. so they're all so excited, and and uh, so it was, it was really really cool. And and what's really awesome and interesting about it is that uh, Lin Manuel Miranda's dad, Luis Miranda, was the very first one to endorse the film. Uh, so I think once his endorsement went in, like there's so many uh, people that were like interested. Okay, this guy they jumped you know, on board. Yeah, they jumped on mm. board. So I think it really helped out uh, with the film. That's that's amazing. You know, um, while we were talking about, you know, other mariachi documentaries that have uh, been been made, but yours, I mean, it's going to make a big, big impact. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the community and and then the genre. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's just to. So this is the experience that I've had uh, with these people that are non musicians, non mariachi, is that the first thing they tell me is like, "Wow, we had no idea." how impactful this music is to its students. Mm. And that's on its own, like we're educating the people. I mean, mariachi is, it's in our blood, man. And it, you know, we, we listen to it all the time. We, we live it, you know, and even if you're not a mariachi musician, I mean, you hear trumpets playing and people always say like, I don't know mariachi, you know, right away they know mariachi, you know, they see the, they see the botonadora and stuff like that. And, and kids, you know, go up and they're just like, oh, mariachi, you know, <clears throat> it's something that 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 we see all the time and we live it. So just to to uh, educate those people what we go through, what our lives are, it's it's pretty awesome. And I'm excited to uh, for other people out there that don't know what it is to kind of get a little taste of it and just be excited about it also uh, because it's a big deal. And we you know we we change lives just like the way my life was changed when I was in high school. So it's, that's what we're, we're paying it forward, right? We're changing the kids' lives. Mm-hmm. Now that you say that, uh, that was going to be my next uh, segue. So let's talk about you. So let's let's understand or know a little bit about your origin. So when did you start playing? Or when did you choose music? Well, I, I, I always knew I wanted to be a musician. Um, there's My mom has pictures of me when I was like seven years old or something like that, holding her broom, pretending it was a guitar. Oh, wow. And... Um, there were, we had uh, the movie La Bamba. I just, I was in love with that movie. And it, I would play it so much that it was like, rrr, rrr, you know, like <laughs> in those videos, you know, it was VHS, the VHS, right? <laughs> and I played it so much. I would watch it so much that it would just, it started dying on me. And so, <laughs> you know, and my mom was like, yeah, it's enough with that movie. You know? <laughs> wow. But, um, but yeah, there, I mean, it's, I always knew I wanted to be a musician. I mean, even when I was in, not just not just the Richie Valens, but like um, um, I used to when I was in elementary, and, and all my friends that that, that are, they always remind me of that. All my elementary friends, um, I used to knew, know all the dance steps to New Kids on the Block. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, it was I mean elementary, right? And so um, so all the dance steps for that, and you know, I used to, I just I just loved it. I love music. I remember my music teacher, uh, Mr. Darnell. Uh, and I remember him teaching his notes. I remember, like, like I said, music has always been. I've always had an interest in music. Desde que estaba chiquito. Um, and then I sixth grade comes along, and my 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 dad's like, you need to be in choir because you love to sing, you know. Because all elementary, that's all I did. I love to sing. So I go to choir, and the first day, you know, they start doing oh and all this. You know, no offense to the people in choir, but I was like, no, this is not for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no offense to them, but. Uh, because it's a beautiful, I, I make my students get into choir actually now. Uh, but, I, you know, when I was in sixth grade, I was like, no, 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 this is not for me. So um, I remember sitting outside in our front porch and I was telling my my mom and my dad, I was like, I don't want to be in choir, you know. So my mom tells me, you need to get into orchestra so you can play the violin and be in mariachi. And I was like, no, man, I don't, want, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want, you know, typical sixth grader, right? Always doing opposite of what your parents tell you to do. Um so, so that's how, uh, um, you know, my mom told me that and, and whatever, but I wanted to play the trumpet, but my parents, no, 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 it's too loud, whatever. 
Um, so I ended up getting into orchestra uh, about three weeks after the, the first year of school. So right away, I was already behind. And so they put me in a, in a, in a, in a certain class, whatever. And, pero me gustó. You know, I really loved when Mr. When Mr. McEwen would, would uh, that was our, my, my sixth grade teacher. Um, you know, he would, he was, he wanted to teach. You know, he, le daba gusto. Hay muchos maestros que como que, ah, no, me, no quiero, I don't want to do this, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I would, I was, I would see him, his, how enthusiastic he was. And me daban ganas, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to learn. And then Miss Seti, which is the other middle school teacher, she would go down and she would, she would work with us and stuff like that. So it was great. Anyway, so um, that's how we, I went through it. But the thing is, this is what happened. I just had, I just had a, I just told my kids this uh, earlier, uh, earlier in the year. I was like, but then I got a girlfriend. <laughs> And it ruined, no, no, it didn't ruin it, but like, it just like, I kind of got distracted. And so I went another way um, and I got really inspired with Mr. Giannis, mm. with Mr. Giannis. Uh, when I got into high school, uh, his enthusiasm was amazing. It reminded me of Mr. McEwen and I, and you know, Mr. Giannis right now, he's like 60 and he has, he's very enthusiastic. You could imagine him, you know, 30 years ago, 30 years ago. It was amazing. He was like, he was so into it. He just, he wanted to teach and, and, and he wanted his kids to learn and become better. And, and, uh, so I, 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 I jumped on that bandwagon again and I was literally sitting last chair in JV orchestra freshman year at the beginning of the school year. And by second semester, I was already in the varsity orchestra. Wow. And by my sophomore year, I was sitting third chair in the varsity orchestra, you know? So it was like, I really fell in love with it. It's not because, porque, you know, you know, me quiero levantar el cuello, but it's because of Miss Giannis' enthusiasm. And it motivated you. It motivated me. Like, just seeing him work. And not just that, it, like, I wanted to do even more. I wanted to be the person that he was when I was an adult. Mm. I wanted to do that because, I mean. He was your inspiration. Yeah, man. It was, it's amazing. And he's the one that made me get into mariachi, actually. He was a mariachi sponsor at Edinburgh North uh, back then. And I remember I was walking out of the orchestra room, going to go meet up with my buddies. And he's like, Abel, get your violin and join with the mariachi. I was like, no, no, I really like that music. No, 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 I'm not asking you. I was like, whoa, he's not asking. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, so I go and I get the violin. I sit down and I always remind him of that. And I was like, look what you created. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's how I started off with, with, with orchestra and also... Wow, uh, I started off with mariachi. It was my orchestra teacher that, that got me into mariachi. Wow. And, and, uh, and for our listeners, um, you're currently working beside Mr. Giannis, right? Yeah, he's, he's uh, my colleague now. Um, um, I, when I graduated high school, I mean college, I went over to, I was working, I worked with Myra Garcia there at, uh, at Memorial Middle School and that would feed into Palm View High School. I worked there for one year and I got the opportunity by Mr. Dempsey, uh, Chad Dempsey. He called me up. He goes, Hey, I hear you're a good mariachi. Um, but at the time it was a band director job. I remember that. Yeah. yeah and, and, and I was like, I did band for one year in high school. And I, was, I don't <laughs> know, man, like, are you going to trust this violinist to go and teach your trumpets? And he did. And, and I'm very fortunate for that because, you know, he I opened the door. Yeah. He opened the door. And, and so at, you know, I grew the program and, um, and we were able to, you know, just make it a mariachi position only. And that's, that's where I'm at right now. So how long have you been at Edinburgh North now? This is my 13th year at Edinburgh North. Wow. Yeah. 13th year. Man, it goes fast. It goes real fast, bro. Real fast. So after, after high school, um, you decide to pursue music in college, right? Well, it's very interesting <clears throat> because, no, I did it. Uh, I wanted to be a musician. The thing is that, like, you know, that the last, you, you have this thing, you, you have this idea, but getting to that is, it's very difficult. Like, especially when you come with the uh, the background of, you know, my parents, you know, they didn't go to college and my older brothers tampoco, you know, and, and like, I'm going to be honest, I didn't even know what a GPA was my senior year in high school. I mean, you're okay. I mean, I was just trying to pass and get my high school diploma. And and the thing is that like the biggest mistake was I started chambiando when I was a junior in high school. I started I started making money, and playing so, gigs. Yeah, playing gigs. You know, going going with the 
I started playing with Mariachi Nueva Generación. And I was, you know, you know, the weekends you go and do a bunch of gigs and, you know, for a, for a teenager, you know, a couple of hundred dollars is great, you know. I mean, so I got comfortable doing that. Uh, I started doing just chambas and, and, and writing music and making money like that. And, and I was good. Um, and then life hit. And then I had a, I had a little girl. I had a, I had a daughter. And I was like, I figured out, like, um, these chambas are not going to be able to provide for her. Mm. I, need to, I need to go back to school. So, so I do. I, I went back to school, but it was until like five years after I graduated high school that I went back to, that I started college. And uh, as a business major. Wow. Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, it was like, um, I always saw myself, you know, going into business, you know, like just, I saw my brother, uh, my oldest brother, like he didn't go to college, but he was a great entrepreneur. And he, he would, he was really good about, about that. And I was like, man, maybe I'll be like my brother, you know, like I'll start, I study business and stuff and I'll, I'll help him out, you know, whatever. And so I'm, I remember I'm in the middle of, a, the middle of an accounting class. And I really literally thought, like, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> you checked out. Yeah, I was like, what am I doing here? I'm a musician. Like, I finished the semester. Whatever. And then I went to the advisor and I changed my, my, changed my major to music. Wow. And so that's how, how that's, that's how, I mean, me trace un poquito, but I had, that had to happen. I had to, like, realize that, no, I belong. I'm a musician. I belong in music. And so, no, gracias a Dios, like, I was able to, to, uh, uh, to catch up and and even though like I was a lot older and then a lot of the people that were there you know um i still I still got to do what you know you know what what all what all my peers had already done and they're already working uh but i you know i i it's never too late right kind of kind of thing and at that time were you still playing with mariachis yeah um so i I played with never had own for for some time um and then and then I, 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 I followed my compadre, este, uh, Oscar. He, 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 he left from Nueva Generación and he went to, to uh, Mariachi Continental. And uh, so I called uh, Hector Guerra and uh, I was like, hey, man, like, I hear like, you need violinists. He's like, no, bro, we're good. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, okay. So I called uh, my compadre. I was like, hey, man, like, no quiere. And he goes, man, I'll call him again. You know, you need to be, like, persistent. And so I called him again. He said, bueno, if you want to start working with us, ven a talón. So I didn't have chambas. Like, I would go to talón and, and choose. So I could learn rep. And um, and so that's how that happened. I started I started chambiando with, with Continental, just talón, and just learning, you know. Like, and, and I was fortunate that Domingo Livan, he was there, and I was able to learn a lot from him. Like, man, that guy's a walking <laughs> brain dude like he knows so many songs or he si no se la sabe, I, te la saca, you know yeah he's, he's amazing and so um so yeah I, I got to learn i got to study with este domingo Livan um and during during the 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 talon or with with oscar or saul because those guys también they're they're very well versed you know se sabían muchas, muchas rolas. like they're really good at, at, at that and so i got to learn with them um and then plus you know Hector finally invited me to to start to start working, pero no me pagaban, you know, like mm. oh, that was oh, wow. you pay you half, you know, because you need to earn your your stripes. Yeah, like you need to earn it, and plus I would get half of everybody else, and you know, it, it was normal. That's what the, you know, that's what that's what you have to do to be in a big big group like this. You have to you have to. It was earn it. it's the norm. Yeah, yeah it was the, the norm. You know, you had to earn it, and I remember like he he told me, hey, te prendes la mano de Dios y te prendes esta canción and whatever and. I remember, like, I used to drive to the gigs, and there was one drive that I had to to go to Brownsville, and singing the song over and over and over. Nunca me la aprendí. I would always get confused, man. But but no, like it, it was really cool. Like uh, when it finally happened, that pidieron la mano de Dios y que la cante, and I just got that that smirk from from uh, from my compadre. He's like, "That's good, dude. He, that, that's awesome." And then. <laughs> You know, sure enough, within the week, yeah, I was a full-time member of Continental, <laughs> getting paid well and everything. So it was, it was pretty awesome. Is that the last group you played for? No. Uh, after Continental, what happened is that uh, Mariachi Continental uh, went through a, I guess it kind of evolved. It went through a change. And, and so it became Mariachi Mexico Lindo because uh, Saul Hernandez, he became the director, the musical director for it. And he changed it to Mariachi Mexico Lindo. And while I was going to 
well, I was going to college, tocaba con el México lindo, and also with the University Mariachi. Um, and so that's, you know, through, throughout the, the, my college years, that's, that's who I played with. But Mexico Lindo slash Continental, it's a very, very busy group. It's puro chambiar, you know, it's all day long. I mean, I remember going to my classes in my traje because I had a, I had a chamba to go to right after. So like at two o'clock in the afternoon, a chambiar, you know, like, and that's, that's the kind of group that it, that was. And uh, once I graduated college i decided you know what this this i can't be in this kind of group anymore like i have to I have to move on um so me salí del de, de mexico lindo and um uh my first paycheck with ecisd oh, no, i'm sorry not with ecisd with la joya they bank with lone star national bank mm. and so my first paycheck uh i go and i'm like yeah, I'm getting paid my first teacher paycheck and I'm there in line at Lone Star and I says I sale Emilio Emilio Santos like hey I was like oh man whatever you know hey so we have a violent spot open man you want to come <laughs> I was like I was, you know I'm a teacher man like you know he goes I'm a banker <laughs> I was like oh that's awesome so we have the same hours you know so yeah. so I was like oh that's that's cool like no more chambiando during the day you know because he's a banker and plus I'm gonna be a teacher and and so that's how that happened and 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 uh I got to play with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, right. actually that's where I met you. Yeah. I got to play with you guys there with, with Siete Leguas and uh and I've been playing with them with Leguas since then. I I I did a couple of a couple of a uh, couple of months. Uh I took a break and I, I helped out with, with Continental again, but back to Leguas. That's that's where I that's where I've been ever since. And so right now you're not playing anymore as much or Yeah, but I mean <clears throat> having a, a group, a high school group it's hard, man. Like, and not just one high school group, but like the JV. I was gonna say, but you have several groups, right? At right. the high school. Yeah, I have two two groups, two two mariachi groups. I have a conjunto. I have a guitar ensemble. Yeah, I was gonna say rondaya, right? Do you it, still have that? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's más o menos. I mean, we're we're start we're we're focusing a lot of it into classical guitar now. Uh, and then we have the middle school group that I'm in charge of. So it's extremely difficult to to have all those ensembles and then go play chambas, you know, so. And then also, you guys also perform your own gigs, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, That's cool. As a matter of fact, today we had, we played for the for the press conference uh, that is that uh, is introduced the new head football coach for UTRGV. The, oh, that's right. My high school mariachi was there performing for that, you know, last night, chambas, you know. So, I mean, we've been performing a lot. I mean, it's it's a... It's, uh, we, I want to give them the experience of what it is like to be a mariachi. Mm. Because a lot of them are not going to continue doing mariachi after high school. So, just get inside lo que es, es mariachi, vamos a chambiar. Yeah. And so, they get that experience and they love it, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, we have our own gigs también. And, <clears throat> you know, the past, the last uh, year or so, estaba quedando mal con, con Emilio mucho. And so, finally, I was like, hey, man, like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take a step back. Uh, he goes, nobody, you know, do you, you do what you need to do and, you know, whatever. And, and, uh, and so I was like, Hey, but I would love to, I mean, I will still buy, I'll still buy the trajes. I'll still be part of the group. I'll still go to the, 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 the practice that I can go to. And, uh, if you allow me to, I could just do the, the concerts. And he goes, yeah, of course. You know, he was really cool about it. And he goes, then if you don't have anything to do on a weekend, you just, and we have chambas, just call me and you'll go work in the chambas. I like, that's awesome. That's so, good. That's pretty awesome. Of it. Now let's look at the other side of the coin, because we've been talking a lot about your mariachi expertise. But now let's talk about the, the classical part of your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know for a while you spent some time playing in VSO. We got to play a couple concerts together. Do you miss that, that uh, scenery? I do. I do, man. I, um, because classical music is what, what really like pushed me, you know, since, like I said, Miss Giannis was a great influencer for me. Uh, he's the orchestra director, and if you know Mr. Giannis, that guy likes to choose really good repertoire, know, repertoire yeah. really good literature, like it's like good stuff. And I mean, I remember playing a boarding symphony, you know, or, or the um, the Dvorak New World, you know, at high school, you know, and and I mean, he just loved to play all this really great literature, and and was I fell in love with it. I love classical music. I, I love to play, um, and so. <clears throat> that took me through, of course, I mean, you have to, you have to, uh, 
play that music, you know, uh, study that music through college. And, and then uh, with, the, with the UTPA Symphony Orchestra, I was able to enjoy playing that and all that stuff. And then when I became a mariachi director, tan tan, no more. So um, my wife played with, with the, with the Valley Symphony Orchestra, and she found out that they needed a violinist. So I called up and I was like, hey, can I audition? You know, like I would love to continue playing with symphony. Uh, so they, you know, they said, yes, I went, I auditioned. It was great. You know, they invited me in. And so I, I got to play with the Vatican Symphony Orchestra for a while. But for the same reason why I took a step backwards with, with Siete Leguas is, you know. The uh, time. The time. I just, sometimes salía bien cateado, like real, real tired, man, like from, from work. And then ahora al, rehearsal. Know, to go rehearsal. And it's a 9.30 sometimes, you know. By the time you get home, it's past 10 o'clock. You go, orale. Again in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was tough. It was, it was rough. I mean, I love playing. I, I wish I had the time to go and, and play, and, uh, but it'll, it's just, you know, you have to put some stuff aside. And then uh, do you foresee yourself maybe one day w- jumping from mariachi director to orchestral director? I do. I always said that, um, that I was going to finish my career as an orchestra director. Um, este, and... Um, so I do, I do see it happening. Um, now, the thing is that Mr. Yanez is going to retire this year. And, you know, I had several people approach me, hey, you're going to apply for that job? And my answer is, I have a lot of mariachi fire in me still. Mm. Like, I don't want to leave mariachi yet. I, I, I mean, I really enjoy it. And, and, uh, and to fill those shoes, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, Mr. Yanez asked me also, and I was like, look, Mr. Yanez, if, if I do take an orchestra job, it's not going to be a high school head. You know, I think I, I will, you know, go to like middle school and I kind of get my feet wet with that and, you know, get and then move my way up, you know, kind of like the way my wife did it. She was great. She she started elementary and then she went to middle school and then she became assistant in high school and now mm-hmm. she's the head wow. you know, at the high school. So kind of like, kind of like that, like you just work your way up just that you don't take on too much at, you know, too fast. And uh, so that's kind of like what I see happening like uh, in the future. I will not teach elementary. Uh, <laughs> my hat's off to the people that teach elementary. That's amazing, but I just, that's not for me. So in the whole span of your career, you know, from middle school to where you're at, what would you say is the biggest adversity you faced? Time. <laughs> no, no, not time. Uh, the biggest is, is uh, keeping up. Uh, in college, um, I was fortunate to have a really, really great violin teacher that really set me straight. And uh, and I will, to this day, I'll always talk about how great she was, uh, Dr. Emily Crane. Mm-hmm. She set me straight, man. And it was like, okay, you can play your, you can play your, 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 uh, your pop music. <laughs> She'll call my pop music. You can play your pop music. Uh, but you need to play this first. And no, but she set me straight, man. Like it was, I mean, Dr. Dawson, I mean, she was great. Andrea Dawson, like she just, all about technique, man. I learned so much from technique with her, but uh, the one that really got me, like, like really pushed me was Dr. Crane. And I guess it's because that's towards the end of my college years, like when I was about to do my senior recital, she really pushed me in. Uh, so yeah, like keeping up, man, because playing mariachi music is, it's, it's, you know, I'm not going to say papita, but compared to classical, it's... It's not as demanding. Right, it's not as demanding, you know. And so if you get too comfortable just playing puro, you know, puro mariachi, you know, like you, you, you start working on, your, on your, um, your etudes or whatever, your solos, you know. I mean, it, it's, it can get pretty difficult. And uh, the thing is that you have to remember that I, I played orchestra till about 18, and then I did chambas for about four or five years. And then I got into college. So it was like, oh, like it was like, like boom. Like, mm-hmm. it was, you know, like it was, um, I had a, a lot of time off of playing literature that's, that was demanding or, you know, that I had to really practice. I mean, the hardest thing that I played was what, violin guapango, you know, like, and you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough song to play, but it's not freaking, you know, the, the, the E major partita buck, you know, that's one of the stuff that I play for my senior recital. It's, that's that's demanding. That's that's right. hard, you know. Like so, it's 
So it, it was, it was, that was the biggest thing is just keeping up with playing that, that, that literature, that, 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 uh, uh, the demand of having to sit there and practice and get better. Wow. I mean, it makes sense, right? The having to, that, that time gap. I mean, now it makes sense what you said yeah. time, because you were basically playing catch up. Right. Yeah. But, uh, would you change it if you could I would not it? change it. No? I won't change it because I learned a lot. Like, I really appreciate the time that of uh, being in Continental and learning from Saul and from Oscar, my compadre, and, and from uh, Domingo Livan. You know, learning from those guys, I, I will treasure that forever because I use that stuff till this day. When I teach my kids how to guardiar, it's when I, I, was, I was learning from them. Mm-hmm. So it was, it's, you know, I, I, I won't, I won't change anything. I, I really like the way things played out, played out. And plus like waiting that long, but my wife is five years younger than me. So I got to meet my wife when I was in college. You know, if I would have gone to college right away, like I would have probably never met her, you know, so it just worked Everything out. Everything worked out at the end. Yeah, it worked out. That's nice. That's nice. Do you have any upcoming projects for your groups right now? Uh, right now, like in the foreseeable future, it's just that, like the the film is what's like kind of like just the main thing right the now. The main thing right now, like for me, like it's I'm I'm a little bit um, intimidated and like a little bit scared about that, but because uh, it's a a new world that I've never ventured into. You know, like I said, I'm a musician. I don't know anything about film and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we're at the point right now at the year where we're preparing for UIL. Uh, for you know, for Tame, for our competitions, you know, um, and then of course every every year we do record a couple of the songs, like two, one or two songs. Uh, so that's another project that we're going to be working on. Going to stand Nathan that does a great job with uh, recording. Um, so so yeah, that's that's what we have going on right now. And when is the the actual Sundance? Um, when do they reveal the 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 festival? It's going to be on the twenty first of January, which actually falls the exact same day as UIL uh, for the mariachi. So it's going to be like, whoa. Um, pero, but yeah, that's going to, that's going to happen. And then, um, and then the, the, the other question that I get all the time is like, when is the premiere? When, when are we going to be able to watch it? Uh, and I'm guessing late January, early February. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but, um, that's that's what my guess is. Uh, do you have any words of advice for future musicians? Well, I'll say what I tell my my students all the time. I'll tell them it doesn't matter when, as long as you do it, mm-hmm. because I live that. Mm-hmm. I took a lot of time, you know, but I'll just make sure you get it done. Um, and and if you if you know, like Nathan was one of my students, you know, Joel and uh, Priscilla and, and even going back to Ralph and all those people, all those kids that are right now uh, playing with the UTRGV symphony or with the mariachi, I would always tell them the same thing. Just get it done. Like, and it's going to be easy. It's going to be easy to, to go to Chambas and, and make money that you've never seen before. Uh, I know because I, I saw that. But that money is not going to get you through life. So my my biggest advice is like, if you have it, use it. Go to college, get yourself an education, and uh, and keep on going, keep on keep on striving, keep on uh, trying to get better, um, trying to <clears throat> to accomplish the goal that you set for yourself. Awesome! I think those are great words. Great words. Well, thank you. Abel, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for agreeing to doing this. I know this is not your your area either. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not. Again, I'll tell you one thing. I'm very, very nervous doing this, but uh, but I mean, I appreciate anyway for you guys uh, calling me up and and being interested in my story, I guess, and and uh, and hopefully uh, the the my words can can motivate kids or people that are just thinking about you know about this career or what they want to do. Thank you, Abel. Yeah, thanks for listening.